Well, in that case, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag allegiance. of the United States of America United States and of to America. the Republic for which it stands, Republic. one and nation one under God, God, indivisible, God. liberty, and justice liberty. for all. <clears throat> Our moment of inspiration today will be provided by Jackie. Good afternoon, President Jeff, fellow Rotarians, Mayor Henry, and special guests. This past week, as we commemorated the birthday of Martin Luther King, we reflected on the mighty power and the passion behind the words he both wrote and spoke, which still profoundly resonate decades later across this great land of ours. This past week, we also heard President Joe Biden speak passionately about the need for unity. And we listened to the youngest poet laureate in US history, Amanda Gorman, reminding all Americans that there will always be light if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. History's greatest leaders do speech for the common good. As a master of the English language, Winston Churchill's words inspired his nation during their darkest hour. Franklin Roosevelt provided comfort through fireside chats. The substance of their words remind us those on the home fronts truthfully of the many challenges they would be facing and of the many sacrifices yet required. These leaders made it clear, however, that if everyone did their part by working together, they would come out on the other side in daylight, both stronger and victorious. Their words bring to mind the real power of how we use, choose to use speech. For it is speech that allows us to communicate and share with others, not only our fears and pain, but also our hopes, our loves, and our good intentions. Speech allows us to convey to others who we really are and is at the very heart of human brotherhood. Unfortunately, we have also seen the pain and lasting harm caused by divisive speech, whether it is from those in leadership positions or from those we interact with on a daily basis. Let's instead rise up together and be inspired by those who have used speech constructively to champion for social justice and the greater welfare of all and to honor all those who have spoken in unity at moments in history when it might have been easier just to be silent. Because what we do and say does matter. Fellow Rotarians, by adopting and practicing the four-way test, we have acknowledged the beauty and the dignity of every human being. Therefore, let us use our words kindly and with compassion and pray that we never take the gift of language lightly. May God bless you and thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Well, welcome to the Rotary Club of Fort Wayne. Do we have any visiting Rotarians? If we could go back to the gallery view so I could see if anyone else is raising their hand. President Jeff, I have three guests. I'm honored to, um, to uh, welcome. The first is the new rabbi at Congregation Akduz Vishalom, Rabbi Mir Bargeron. We're delighted that he's here. He's a great spiritual leader. We also welcome the president of the Jewish Federation of Fort Wayne and um, a person known to most of us on this, on this Zoom, Ben Eisbert. And uh, finally, I welcome my husband, Dr. Eric Schreier, who's always an inspiration to me. Thank you. Well, welcome to all of the guests of Jackie. You're most welcome here at Rotary. Uh, Stephanie, you want to introduce our students again? Yes, we have two students on today, E from Northside High School and Quinn from Canterbury. So they're joining us for their second week of the month. And, uh, President thank Jeff. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, welcome back. Yes, John. Uh, I have a guest today, Richard Scruton. Richard moved to Fort Wayne last year and is visiting our Rotary Club today. Richard is the manager of the Patriot Engineering Office here in Fort Wayne. But uh, please welcome Richard to our Rotary Club today. 
Welcome, Richard. President Jeff and fellow Rotarians, I have a guest, Suha Abbasi, who is joining Rotary uh, upon approval of her application through Entheos Audiology. Welcome to Rotary. Do we have President a- President Jeff, I have a guest today, uh, Clifford Clark, who is our, my next door neighbor and our speaker two weeks ago, and he's joining us to hear the mayor today. Welcome back, Clifford. Any other guests or visiting Rotarians? Seeing no hands up in the air. Uh, at this time, if you've not already done so, please uh, check in online uh, to wh whatever system you use and tell your friends that you are visiting uh, or attending the greatest Rotary Club on the face of the earth. This date in history. On this date in 1849, gold was discovered at Sutter's Creek, igniting the California gold rush and eventually leading to the creation of the San Francisco 49ers. You know, they were called 49ers, never mind. Uh, on this date in 1964, and this harkens back to Jackie's moment of inspiration, Sir Winston Leonard Churchill passed away at the age of 90, having completed a long and distinguished career for his country, including two separate terms as prime minister. It was his darkest hour speech of 1940 where Churchill famously said, we shall fight them on the beaches. We shall fight them at the landing places. We shall fight them in the fields and in the streets. We shall fight them in the hills and we shall never surrender. Thank you. Uh, I was on this date in 1988 that Andrew Lloyd Webber's Phantom of the Opera, a musical version of Gaston Leroux's a melodrama novel opened in New York City to become the longest running show in Broadway history. And sadly, it was on this date one year ago, or roughly this date, I believe it was actually tomorrow, that NBA great Kobe Bryant died in a helicopter crash at the age of 41. This date in rock history in 1975, Please Mr. Postman became a U.S. number one hit for the second time. First a top hit by the Marvelettes in 1961, it was the Carpenters that took it to number one in 1975. The Beatles had a very popular version of Please Mr. Postman where they changed the uh, gender uh, of the lyrics. Uh, it was on their second US album, but they never released it as a single, thus it never made it to the top of the chart. And that is this date in history. Our Rotary Is Moment will be provided by Ron Verley. Thank you, President Jeff. On this day, when our mayor gives the State of the City address, I would say Rotary is serving Fort Wayne. I am only going to mention a few things we've done. In our centennial year, we put up the centennial clock tower that stands in front of the library. Our Rotary found Foundation uh, has been part of the Riverfront Project with the Rotary Fountains there. We put up a hundred little free libraries. We partner with Washington schools. Years ago, there was an avenue of trees in this past year when that avenue of trees was in danger. Uh, we went to a council meeting to arrange an acceptable agreement. During COVID, we partnered with the Sagam Foundation to raise 50, a $50,000 grant for masks and gowns that went to Parkview, Lutheran hospitals, the neighborhood health, uh, Matthew 25 and the rescue mission. We've partnered with the Miss Virginia's uh, kitchen. This year, we did a food drive for Wellspring. Uh, if uh, when we do our Rotary Gala annually, that goes to different things. And this year, part of that will go to Wellspring, uh, depending on how we're able to do it with COVID. We're looking forward to partnering with the Summit City Rotary through our Peace Committee to work with the Oxford Community Center. We've also joined this year through the Peace Committee with working with United Front in Fort Wayne. And I'm sure I'm missing many, many other things that we do to serve our local Fort Wayne community. Those of you that have been members longer than I probably remember so many more things. And uh, 
I just celebrate our service to Fort Wayne. With that, I'd invite you, uh, if you haven't paid your $3 ahead, to use PayPal and put your $3 in. And are there any high fives? Anybody? I'm looking around. That is Rotary is President Jeff. I don't see anybody raising their hand for a high five. So thank you, Ron, and your lovely uh, Vanna White sidekick. So yes, uh, if you'd like to pay a fine uh, at some other time, please use our PayPal link. Uh, if you were if we were meeting in person, we'd be paying about seventy-five dollars every six months in fines each individual. So if you haven't done so, please consider using that link uh, to make a contribution uh, to that. Uh, it, it used to be a fine, and now we call it our service fee because it goes toward all of our uh, committees that do service work in the community. So it's it's an important source of revenue that we need to continue to have to continue to fund all those efforts. Uh, I will ask you, if you use the PayPal for this or for any other purpose, we ask that you put a note in that indicating what that money is for. We've had some people use it to make a contribution to the foundation. We've had some people use it to pay uh, towards their uh, service fee, uh, but it always helps Mark uh, if he knows what you're sending that money for. So. Uh, make Mark's job easier, and please indicate why you're using the PayPal link when you do. And now I'd like to thank our Rotary workers. Our spin editor was supposed to be Stasha, but she is getting her virus shot right now. <laughs> so uh, substituting for her is, uh, thank you, John, for stepping in. And uh, AV today, uh, I believe, Kurt, you're doing it? Because my, my schedule says... Looks like uh, Kurt's handling it, so. Yes, I'm you. filling in for Holly, thank you. All right, thank you so much. Uh, our dues are due, so if you haven't paid your dues, again, use that PayPal link and indicate why you're using that link and what the money is for. So if you haven't paid those dues, please do do that voodoo that you do so well and pay those dues. Uh, we will be meeting on uh, Zoom until uh, further notice. Oh, and Stephanie, I did see your note uh, in the chat room uh, regarding uh, Phantom of the Opera. If you want to give your lungs some exercise uh, sometime, please see me because I know every song in that play. And if they would ever allow it to be performed locally, I will be trying out for the Phantom. <laughs> uh, Only for you, Jeff. What's that? Only for you. Okay. Uh, if you'd like to use a Zoom room for a committee meeting, please see Jane. And we want to make sure that uh, not one group is using it at the same time because then it gets messy. And you can't have those conversations you need to have. Uh, do we have our speaker on yet? Okay. I, I do case, not see him yet. All right. In that case, we've got some time to kill. So does anyone have uh, a topic they would like to talk about? Jeff, this could be your solo opportunity. <laughs> I'm at the office. It's frowned upon in, in the bank. <laughs> Jeff, you might you might want to redo your big announcement from last week. Oh, well, we that is true. There are some people that may not be on here uh, from that were that when we made the announcement last week. Again, this was the announcement we were originally going to make in December, and it got postponed because uh, for various reasons. But uh, we, we did make the announcement within the spin that, uh, as you recall, in December, Holly and I were the program and we were talking about the foundation, really doing some education on everything about it. And one of the things we shared is every time you give, let's just say $100 to the foundation, you earn 100 recognition points. And as those recognition points build up, when they reach 1,000 recognition points, you use them to obtain a Paul Harris for another person, not for yourself, but we have members that will want to uh, want to uh, honor their spouse or their children or grandchildren with a Paul Harris, or we've had members that have said, I want to give a Paul Harris to this other club member that currently does not have one because they've done something marvelous for our club or in the community, or they've actually given Paul Harris's to someone in the community that has done something wonderful. You can use those recognition points for anyone other than yourself. 
Well, Dr. Kalapara, as you know, has given hundreds of thousands of dollars to our international grants. As a result, he has hundreds of thousands of recognition points. And what he decided to do, because of the wonderful partnership that he's developed with our club in doing these projects in his native country of India, he used his recognition points to obtain a Paul Harris for every member of our club, which means if you were not presently a Paul Harris, now you are. If you are already a Paul Harris, you're a Paul Harris plus one, and so on. So I have in <laughs> boxes of Paul Harris's. Uh, the spin indicated the total number. I believe from his gift it was, uh, well, we've got 121 members, so we had 121 Paul Harris's uh, that we have to present. And I've also received some additional Paul Harris's to present from people that have gotten matches from the district and, and whatnot. So. Uh, whenever we get back together, we're going to have a Paul Harris party. There's just no other way to describe it. It'll be a lot of fun. And we've got people that are going to be receiving one, two, and even three Paul Harris's all at the same time from their own giving, from Dr. Kalapara's gift and whatnot. So uh, it's going to be fun. And it's, it's, it makes our club also a 100% Paul Harris club, which very few clubs are particularly clubs of our size. So it's it's a wonder, wonderful gift that he gave, but we also still encourage to keep the foundation in mind as someplace that you yourself make your donations to because it's one of the most reputable uh, foundations in all the world and does great work locally, around the country, and obviously internationally because we're involved in that ourselves. Jeff? Yep. We have two uh, meeting attendees with their hand raised. Rick Zolman and Clifford Clark both have their hand raised virtually. And I wanted to let you know that our speaker has arrived to the meeting as well. Wonderful. Well, first, I will, act, I will call on our guest, uh, Clifford. So I, I'm hoping that you can hear me and I'm not on mute. I just wanted to say I'm, I'm a guest of Ron Burley this time. And uh, I just want to reiterate my appreciation and thanks for having me at the prior meeting. And I uh, just wanted everybody to know that it was uh, definitely my pleasure and it has had a humongous uh, positive result. So thank you again. Well, thank you, Clifford. It was always wonderful. To, it's wonderful to have you come back and please consider joining us anytime. And uh, Rick, you have an announcement. Yeah, I am working on Rotary Is Presenters for the month of February. I have uh, February 8th available. If somebody is interested, please uh, shoot me an email and let me know. Thank you. Thank you, Rick, and thank you, Ron. Uh, I've never been compared to Oprah before, but I guess that would be Dr. Kalapara that you're comparing to Oprah. <laughs> if there's no other uh, comments or announcements, then I will ask uh, uh, John to please introduce our speaker. And I remind everyone that following his uh, presentation, we'll ask for questions from our uh, Rotarians first and guests. Uh, and then we'll uh, open it up to the members of the media that are attending today. So, John. Thank you, President Jeff. I believe today marks the 14th consecutive January that Mayor Tom Henry has addressed our club um, since he took office in 2008. The only other speaker that I can even imagine who may have spoken to us more frequently uh, would be Dr. Wendy Robinson, who became superintendent in 2003. So Mayor Henry, you still have a few more opportunities to break her record if she owns it. So if you'll remember a year ago on January 20th, 2020 BC, before COVID, Mayor Henry gave our club a summary of city accomplishments and a preview of what he hoped his fourth term in office would achieve. He noted that Promenade Park, the Bottle Works apartment complex, the downtown Hampton Inn and Suites and the landing had had ribbon cuttings in 2019. He looked forward to completing a traffic roundabout at Goshen Road's Five Points intersection, a new entrance to Fonky Park off Goshen Road, and an improved Ardmore corridor linking the city and Fort Wayne International Airport. Looking ahead, the mayor anticipated development to the east and west of Promenade Park and a reveal of a public art master plan called Art for All. 
He also told us of his bold plan to go beyond what one might think of as being within the uh, scope of work for a mayor to focus on um, four areas of public health. Well, he was certainly right about one thing. Much of his focus would be on public health, but not so much on fighting smoking, obesity, the drug problem, and infant mortality. Two months after speaking to us, COVID-19 virus hit Allen County. We all had to adjust. Here to tell us what the city has accomplished amid a pandemic, how the city has adapted, and what lies ahead is the mayor of the great city of Fort Wayne, Tom Henry. I think you're on mute, Mayor Henry. There we go. Uh, thank you so much. It really, once again, is a, is a pleasure to be before all of you. Uh, certainly, uh, the technique is a little bit different this year, but uh, uh, I, nevertheless, I enjoy taking a few minutes to speak to, uh, in many cases, my, my fellow Rotarians. As many of you know, I was uh, fortunate to be in Rotary for a number of years, and, and unfortunately, my schedule made it uh, so that I could not attend the amount of meetings that I wanted to. But Nevertheless, you're all still in my hearts as far as uh, what you do for our community and what Rotary does internationally as well. So thanks again for giving me a few minutes. Uh, what I thought I would do today is spend just a few minutes on, in three different areas. Uh, the first area, uh, John touched on a little bit, and that is what happened to us in 2020, what happened to the entire world, which certainly changed the working conditions of everyone uh, who, who this uh, uh, pandemic touched. In Fort Wayne, uh, unfortunately, uh, for quite a period of time, we were hit uh, rather hard. From about uh, February on, uh, we could not get our arms around it. Uh, there were a number of different spikes going on. There was so much misunderstanding of, of what COVID uh, brought with it. Uh, how to use masks, how not to use masks. So it was a tremendous learning process for all of us. In the meantime, uh, we had people get extremely sick in our community. And unfortunately, in many cases, we lost citizens. Uh, it's getting better, but much of 2020, we were consumed with that entire process of trying to, again, get our head around what was going on in our community, what was going on in our state, our country, and the world. During that same period of time, we experienced a, a lot of social unrest. In May of last year, our city experienced something that we had never experienced before. And that was an outpouring of anger and frustration and depression that took over not only activities in downtown as far as people demonstrating uh, in a number of different ways, but it pushed on to physical damage of, of property as well. Again, something that our community had never experienced to that extent before. Uh, and it was something that, again, we had to respond to as quickly as possible and try to make sure that our city and the citizens were protected. And then on top of that, we had a very unusual election period. Uh, we had two individuals running uh, for office, a current president uh, who had his own way of dealing with many of the problems that our country uh, was facing. And we had a new uh, former vice president who again has his, had his interpretation of how things should be run. And they were battling throughout the entire year. So our city was, was in a position where we were getting hit from all sides with a number of challenges that we had never experienced before. Uh, on top of that, we were trying to move forward a lot of the goals and objectives that John talked about. And we had identified as a team that my cabinet had put together as uh, projects and programs and initiatives that we did have the financial wherewithal and the personnel to accomplish those. So there was a tremendous amount of activity, uh, activity taking place in 2020. 
As far as the social unrest component, we immediately put together a commission made up of about two dozen individuals that immediately began working on the, the whys and the wheres uh, of, of how this thing happened and how could we not only uh, lower the temperature in our community, but how, how could we make sure that something like this never happened again? And what was, what was that the root, what was the root cause of all of this? And how could we go about as a community embracing the, the tension and turning it into something more positive? We also employed the uh, Board of Health to step in and the county commissioners and state of Indiana to work as a team on the uh, coronavirus situation and how could we continue to educate the public as far as those measures that needed to be taken to lessen the impact on as many of our citizens as possible while we were working on uh, a vaccine. So we had a lot of meetings behind the scenes trying to make sure that employers and retail operations and restaurants and bars and others would also participate in this to protect our citizens. Now we did best we could as far as observing what was going on nationally. And what we tried to do more than anything was to make sure that we could separate as much fact from fiction as we could without getting ourselves too involved in the, in the, uh, the debate between those two gentlemen. But at the same time, we had to make sure that the news that was being presented to all of us was as objective as possible. And that's a lot more difficult than a lot of people realize. So we were very much involved in those three or four challenges. But again, at the same time, I told my staff that we could not just sit back on our laurels and not do anything else to make sure that our city uh, was in the best pop possible position it could be in. So we broke uh, our operations down into six different areas. The first being public safety. You know, were, was our fire department and police department prepared? Were they in a position as far as manpower and equipment to make sure that they could not only do the duties that they were used to doing, but with these new challenges before our community, did we have the resources to make sure that we could continue to be the best city that we could be. So the chiefs had a tremendous amount of responsibility. And quite frankly, I think they handled it in, an ad, in a truly admirable uh, fashion. We also took a look at our infrastructure were these streets and the curbs and the sidewalks that are so many of our citizens depend on, did we have a plan in place? We invested the previous year $28 million, which was an unheard of amount of money for a city our size. Not only did we do it in 2019, but we budgeted to do it for 2020 and we did it again. Our uh, street department uh, never let up, our public works department never gave in to a lot of the pressure that they were given to, to back off and put their money elsewhere. Again, infrastructure was just too important uh, to them. Our parks department, uh, which uh, was probably in the forefront as far as offering quality of life measures and initiatives for our citizens. Again, in 2019, we invested $3 million and Steve and the staff did it again in 2020. They never let up on making sure that the, that the recreational and family initiatives that we had put together, that they did not wane in their presentation. We, uh, uh, the, in, in, uh, in city utilities, one of the biggest uh, projects ever in the history of Fort Wayne, the Deep Rock Tunnel, that continued to operate unbeknownst to a lot of it because it's 200 feet underground. But what is to be a five mile long tunnel to capture a lot of the wastewater and be able to take care of it before we put it in the rivers, uh, we're already about two and a half, three miles along. That has been chugging along 24 hours a day, seven days a week, again, unbeknownst 
to a lot of us, but something that's going to be, again, make a, a significant statement uh, for our community. The, um, the downtown, you know, where, where I thought we might have to slow down in some of the programs that uh, we historically have been able to accomplish in downtown. I did not know if we were going to be able to gather the resources necessary to, to make sure that I, our downtown continued to have the momentum. But again, it never stopped. And probably the, the primary uh, focus uh, was, the, was uh, electric works. The, uh, that, as many of you know, was, was a very contentious uh, uh, initiative for quite some time because of the complexity and the number of moving parts. So for four or five years, this had been worked on and changed and manipulated and monitored, trying to make sure that all the pieces were in place. Well, finally, it came to be in 2020. Paperwork was signed, money was uh, put in place. And as I speak, uh, construction is being started on a massive project. It's, uh, uh, as most of you know, it's broken into two sections, uh, one on the east side, one on the west side. Uh, we've started on the west side. It's about a $280 million project on the west side. And we've been able to put together uh, sufficient funds to be able to again, uh, again put, that, to put that together with the anchor uh, uh, development being a do it best. Uh, in about two years, um, uh, it's my understanding, in about two years of what everything will be ready for them to move in for Fort Wayne Community Schools, for Sweetwater, Parkview, and a number of others who have uh, signed uh, MOUs and are now in the process of signing uh, full lease agreements so that we'll have an additional offering, a massive offering right outside of downtown Fort Wayne. But at the same time, we uh, broke ground on the new Ashbury project, which if you drive by uh, the project now, which is right next door to the old Metro building, uh, they are going to be building a, a mixed use development there with a parking garage, retail space, and the home office for a banking institution here in town. And, and the parking garage, which will make it unique is not only will it serve that building and the Metro building for those who uh, purchased the condominiums on top, but it's also gonna be providing parking for the new hotel, which will be opening in April right across the street. Uh, the Bradley is just about finished. Uh, I talked to Barbara uh, from time to time and she's very excited about this very unique offering of a boutique hotel in downtown Fort Wayne. And if you continue to head a little bit north, you'll come to Promenade Park. And uh, in February or March, we'll be breaking ground on the uh, at Promenade at Riverfront. That's the Barrett Stokely project. That's about an $80 million mixed use development, again, of retail uh, hospital, uh, excuse me, uh, retail, uh, uh, hotel, or excuse me, not hotel, apartments and uh, office space. Uh, but that will go up and down the river. And uh, again, that will take about two or three years to build. It's massive in, in uh, size, but it blends in very well with Promenade Park. And then if you move uh, uh, east of there, you'll get to the parking lot of Club Soda. And this summer, we'll be breaking ground there for the second Barrett Stokely project. Again, about an $80 million development that will be mixed use as well, but what will be unique about that particular development is there will be townhomes up and down Clinton Street from the pavilion all the way to uh, Superior Street and on the other side uh, up and down Bar Street. So all of those were continuing uh, to be worked on as well. And uh, as, as was mentioned earlier by John, a couple of developments that were finished in 2020, the uh, widening and taking out of the curve on State Street between Wells and North High, Northside High School, the completion of the uh, roundabout at Goshen and State, or excuse me, Goshen and Sherman, and the finishing up of the Ardmore Avenue to increase uh, the uh, uh, safety and appearance of going from the uh, expressway into our airport. So all of those things took place in 2020. 
during a pandemic, during a, a time where, where our, our, our society was being challenged with a number of social issues, during the time where our economy went up and down, during the time when we had a lot of political unrest, our city never deviated from the fact that we had established some time ago that we were gonna be in the forefront of our state as far as making sure that our city was moving forward. And again, we never never deviated from that. And what a statement for our, our city to make. But we're not done yet. We're gonna continue. It's uh, we, we're, right now we're developing for 2021, a Southeast strategy. The Southeast quadrant of our city has been suffering for quite some time because we've never been able to identify truly what was possible Southeast. But we finally put together a, a, a committee. Uh, in fact, uh, I, some of you may be on that committee and we've developed some areas where we feel have some real potential and we're gonna be rolling those out in 2021. I know uh, Sharon Tucker, the city councilwoman for the, for the area, she's been at the forefront. She's helped us out immensely, but we have been able to identify certain areas and uh, uh, we'll begin to, to move those along. The, uh, we also have uh, uh, the, our airport itself. I talked about widening Ardmore to get to the airport. Now we're gonna spend millions of dollars redoing our airport. I mean, let's face it, we call ourselves Fort Wayne International Airport. So let's, you know, let's look like one. So we're going to add in more loading spaces. We're going to, our, our terminals, we're going to uh, increase the baggage area. We're really going to make it something that, that we all can be, we all can be proud of. Uh, the, um, we're going to be all, uh, continuing to develop our urban trail downtown. It'll go from the Grand Wayne Center down Harrison Street to Superior. It'll turn east and then uh, uh, head uh, south on on, uh, on Bar Street, uh, a much wider sidewalk area. The whole idea is to invite people to, to come downtown. And I think we're also gonna be breaking ground in 2021 on the engineering to replace the, uh, the bridge on Superior right next, uh, I'm sorry, on uh, Spy Run, right next to Hall's uh, Gas House. Uh, we have the, the Spy Run Bridge, which has uh, all kind of uh, uh, paid us price as far as timing. So we're gonna be taking off the top of that, redoing it, and we're gonna be renaming the bridge, uh, that uh, the Fort Wayne Veterans Memorial Bridge. Uh, that resolution is in front of the legislature now. Uh, Representative Giaquina uh, is carrying the bill and uh, we'll be building a brand new bridge uh, for all of us to not only enjoy, but to give our veterans a recognition of uh, the work that they've done. So you can see that uh, even though many of us worked out of our homes for a number of periods, in fact, today we just opened up uh, Citizen Square again after being closed for uh, seven or eight weeks, uh, we did not rest. Uh, my staff, all 2,000 of them, realized that we still had an obligation to keep our city moving, and uh, I couldn't be more proud of them. So with that, I'd be glad to take any questions. Well, Mr. Mayor, uh, you're, you're serving in your fourth term. Yes. Uh, and uh, this, this one certainly has a different flavor than the uh, prior three. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, know, I know you're only shortly into this term, but uh, would you say that this has the workings to be the most difficult term that you faced because of all the issues? Unquestionably, we've got some challenges that none of us have ever had to face before. Uh, you know, we talked about the pandemic, and I know this is uh, not what you want to hear, what any of you want to hear, but uh, this isn't over yet just because we have a couple of vaccines that have been approved and now be distributed as quickly as possible. Uh, we are far, far away from being able to take our masks off and, and worry about social distancing. Uh, I, since we're, since we're uh, Zooming and you can't throw anything at me, I can tell you that uh, I do not expect us to be anywhere in a position to say that COVID is in the rearview mirror until probably this time next year. 
uh, you know, it, and I, it, let me explain why I say that. President Biden has a very aggressive schedule for, for uh, vaccine distribution. He would like to do a million a day for the next hundred days. And what a, what a, uh, what an initiative. But even if he did that, we have 330 million people in this country. So you still have another 230 million people sitting out there that need to be vaccinated. Now that's just the first vaccination. You've got to wait two or three weeks for your second vaccination. So my friends, this is going to take a while. Uh, so, and right now we, we're having meetings on, quite frankly, on our festivals for this summer. You know, do we have to delay German Fest again and the Three Rivers Festival and all of these other great summer offerings, <clears throat> excuse me, that make our city famous for what it has to offer in the summer? Uh, are we going to be in a position to offer those again? Uh, if so, it would be on a very, very limited basis, and I'm not sure how we could. So that is still first and foremost in my, in, in my goals and objectives for this year is to keep that process moving along, keeping all of you safe as we begin to get vaccinated and move on. Uh, so yeah, this, it's gonna be an extremely challenging year. Uh, also access to capital. Uh, you know, a lot of our small businesses, unfortunately uh, closed. Uh, they were hoping that would be temporary. Unfortunately, it's probably permanent in many cases. Uh, so we, we're going to have a, a, a downturn on, on some of the uh, uh, hospitality offerings, some of the entertainment offerings in our community. Uh, it's going to take a while for them to get replaced. And, and where is the money to, to replace it? Uh, yeah, we've got some real challenges that uh, historically we've never had to face before. So it's, it's, it's going to be a tough year. Do we have other Rotarians with questions? Yes, I, I have a question, Mr. Mayor. First of all, thank you very much for coming. I was just wondering how your view of the social justice um, uh, um, situation changed, was expanded, or in some way after the social justice um, um, upheavals that happened here last summer. What changed for you and your outlook in yourself as well as your outlook on the city? Well, there were two things that became evident right away to me. One was the day after the disastrous situation in our community, which happened on a Friday night. Uh, and for those of you that witnessed it, it was a, a horrific uh, uh, situation in our community uh, to have people really put in harm's way and not just uh, those who happened to be in the area, but our own police officers and, and people in vehicles. I mean, it was, it was really, really uh, a stressful situation for a few hours. Well, we got through that, but the next morning, I came down here early in the morning with several of my staff members, and we began walking the sidewalks of downtown where windows had been busted out and, and uh, graffiti had been written, ugly graffiti, on the walls and, and uh, uh, benches turned over. And as we were walking through citizens, our citizens, your neighbors and mine, all of a sudden came out of nowhere. I mean, they just started walking out of alleys, walking, getting out of their cars and they started picking up the glass and they started uprighting the benches and they started scrubbing off the graffiti these citizens didn't work for anybody. They didn't work for me. They didn't work for you. And one lady said it all. She looked at me as she was picking up glass and she said, Mayor, this is not Fort Wayne. And I'll never forget that because I think everyone downtown that was, that was working in that environment would have said the same thing. This is not our city. We don't do this. We're better than this. And I think that's the first lesson that I've learned was we have a tremendous citizen base that recognizes that we're, we're kind of special. Mm -hmm. But the second thing that I recognized was obviously 
there's a concern here. And it's, it's, it was more, was more than just uh, being upset because of what happened to George Floyd. It was deeper than that. And that's why I put together the Commission on Social Justice and Police Reform, because those were the two areas that I thought probably were at the foundation of a lot of the concern. And um, uh, Michelle Chambers, City Council Member Michelle Chambers and, and Joe Jordan, the two of them co-chaired the commission and they were meeting not, not once a month, they were meeting every other week, every other Monday they met, which is a tremendous ask for busy people, but by God, they met. And I went to some of the meetings and they worked. And they went out to the police academy to view some of the training that was taking place. And they would bring uh, individuals in and, and uh, uh, talk about the needs and the wants as it pertained to that, those areas. Now they've come back with some recommendations, which they're, they're going to be giving me almost as we speak. I think within the next week or two, they have a number of recommendations, which we'll go through and determine whether or not we already offer it, but maybe it needs to be tweaked. Or we don't offer it yet, how can we make it a part of the uh, Safety Academy's curriculum? Or maybe we just don't have the ability to do it now. And a good example of that is they wanted police cameras. Uh, body cams. Well, we only had a few. Well, they want more. So we went to city council on their recommendation. We've asked for funding for 100 more cameras. Now we need about 400, but they're very expensive. So we said, okay, let's set it up where we will get 100 or 100 and some every year for the next three years. Uh, but that was one of the, their recommendations and that's what we're doing. So those are the two things that I picked up uh, that our city is, is an unbelievable city as far as its pride in what we have to offer. And we have the ability to address some of the uh, social needs and, and wants and desires. So it was a, there was a, quite a learning experience as well. Great question, great answers. Uh, other Rotarians with questions? Or Dick, Dick. I got to unmute. Thank you. Mayor Tom, this last weekend, supposedly the city mayors nationally were meeting. What did you bring back from that meeting in terms of the issues that they're facing and how they compare to what we're doing and lessons that they can share with us and what, what's happening in our city? Well, most of our meeting actually was spent on public safety and how to go about uh, addressing some of the challenges that we just talked about. You know, again, uh, we were very blessed uh, to have experienced only really two days of true upheaval. The first day, which was, which was devastating. And even the second day, when we did have a rather large mass of individuals and we were prepared, for, a little bit better prepared for them with uh, police officers and others, no damage to property happened that second night. We had to go around and keep people moving, but there was no physical damage to automobiles or to businesses. And as I talked to my colleagues and as I was working with the uh, uh, U.S. Conference of Mayors, that was almost unheard of. Everybody had day after day after day of social upheaval. And in fact, even if you go to our, our capital, Indianapolis, uh, you'll still see windows downtown boarded up. And it's been six, seven months. Uh, yeah, there's still a lot of tension. Uh, Topeka's another one. Uh, Seattle's another one. Uh, these, they were all on the call. Uh, and we were, again, police officers primarily were sharing uh, how they were trying to, to handle their, their current environment. And then we went beyond that. And this is something that we've had to institute today. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, we, we talked about how do we keep uh, the decision makers, the elected officials in our city safe uh, because of what happened at our Capitol when when they were, uh, when, when um, demonstrators, uh, and I hate to call them demonstrators because that's almost too good of a word, 
they, they were uh, they were brutes. Uh, they, they were uh, uh, illegal thugs, and going into our capital and threatening to to hang our vice president, threatening to to assassinate our our uh, uh, speaker of the house. Uh, that went way beyond a demonstration, but because of things like that and the, the possibility that there's still a lot of anger out there, uh, measures are being taken now to protect elected officials throughout our country and Fort Wayne is no different. So effective today, for instance, for those of you that uh, come to Citizen Square, you would not be able to come up to the fourth floor unless you have a specific appointment and are keyed up by security. It's, it's difficult. That was a difficult decision to make because I, I hope all of you know that the county commissioners and I have always tried to be very transparent. Uh, I have an open door policy as best I can. Uh, I want people to come in and sit down and talk. Uh, but unfortunately, the uh, period that we're in now is putting us in the position that we have to we have to step back. But uh, yeah, a lot of the conversation, Dick, that was that was taken was on response to to uh, social action uh, in, in, or social unrest in our community, and then also protection of our uh, of our elected officials. When I see that you uh, unmuted yourself, did you have a question for the mayor? No, I didn't. I didn't know. I, I, I knew it. I, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, Barb, you had another question? Yeah. Um, so, you know, you, as you, you were going through your talk, you really mentioned a lot of heavy things that you have to deal with both last year and this year. How do you find balance in your life to keep yourself sane and hopefully <laughs> happy? What do you do? Well, Barbara, it's, uh, you know, as I look at all of you and I can see most of you, uh, there is not one of you uh, that I know of who, who has not been put in positions where you've had to make some very difficult uh, decisions as well. You know, that's, you know, we, we all chose to be of service to our community in one way or another. Uh, uh, and yeah, I'm going through a period of time right now where uh, my colleagues and I are being faced yeah, with, some, with some tough decisions, but uh, I've got a loving family, thank God, and uh, uh, I've got a, a nice bottle of bourbon at home. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, no, it, it's, uh, uh, family and friends mean, mean a lot. Uh, those that you can actually talk to with, without uh, uh, being afraid that they want something in return. Uh, it's uh, no, it's it's friendship uh, means everything in a in a time like this. President Jeff, I have a question. Yes, please, John. Um, in your talk last year, Mayor, you did mention some uh, unusual and what sounded like more long range uh, dreams, and that was to address some public health issues in yes. the world, like obesity and yes. infant mortality. Can you bring us up to date on those thoughts? Yes, thank you for asking. That is still very uh, near and dear to me. Unfortunately, as I talked to those organizations last year, a lot of what we had or wanted to do, we had to put on hold, uh, but we are gonna be rolling those out again. I actually have some staff members who are going to be meeting with uh, the American Lung Association, American Diabetes Association and others uh, to make sure that uh, we want that we can get back on board. We're also looking for some additional grants and I'll be announcing at my state of the city uh, a new offering that's going to be uh, uh, downtown. I think I can, I'll go ahead and sneak it away and let, and let you know uh, what it is that, but the, the ward, the old ward school uh, that the forming community schools was thinking about tearing it down. Uh, the uh, neighborhood health clinic has taken that over. I think there was a short press release on that a few weeks ago, but I don't think they really grasp what's going to be happening there. The, the school inside is going to be completely rehabbed and they're going to be offering up a number of different 
health opportunities within that organization. Uh, everything from an expansion of the current offerings of neighborhood health clinic uh, as far as medical and dental care, but they're going to be expanding it to, to uh, uh, mental health uh, offerings. They're going to be uh, uh, getting into to daycare operation. It's really going to be quite the comprehensive offering right smack in the middle of the 46806 area, which we all know has been a, an area of need. So I'm terribly excited about that. Uh, there's also going to be a, a number of grants that are going to be uh, asked for to expand it even further. But if you're familiar with the school, it's a pretty good sized facility. So they've got all kinds of opportunities there and they've got philanthropic groups and developers who want to work with them. So that's where we're gonna be doing a lot of our, uh, uh, our work as far as trying to offer some additional educational components and like. At this time, I'd like to open up the questions to the members of the media that uh, are also uh, on here with us today. Does anyone have a question they'd like to ask the mayor? Nothing from the media, good. <laughs> I'm looking to see if there's anyone that's raising their hands. He has given some pretty meaty answers to the excellent questions that he's had so far. So hopefully you've gotten some, uh, some good information for uh, something to write up about the excellent job that our mayor is doing. Oh, thank you. Any other questions from anyone? Dick. Yeah. Hey, Jeff. Yeah, go ahead. Mayor, um, I'm particularly interested in the southeast side and the Johnny May Farm and that whole area, the modifications that you made to the old Coke uh, factory <laughs> and the renovations of the um, neighborhoods and so forth. Can you see the, the possibility of what you've done at the Ward School being transferred into that southeast quadrant because again, it's an underserved area as far as health uh, accessibility to health care and and uh, other social services and and uh, you know we've tried to do some things with the Johnny May Farm that have been very successful, but uh, it's only one piece. You're right, Dick. It's only one piece. There are a number of social needs uh, actually throughout our. Uh, city, but certainly in the southeast part of our city. The four areas that we talked about earlier, obesity, di uh, diabetes, uh, smoking, uh, infant mortality, uh, those incidents occur all over our city, but there appears to be a higher percentage in the southeast quadrant of our community. And that's, that's one of the reasons we, we're going to try to work with uh, the Ward School or it's a uh, now the neighborhood health clinic, they're the ones that are going to be the, the landlords. We want to work with them. We've uh, also finished our discussion with, uh, uh, with uh, IU Health. They are going to be opening up a health clinic at Southgate. Now, I realize that's south and not so much southeast. But as we begin to grow these offerings, I think we'll, we'll, we'll be going more and more in, in that direction. Uh, we've also talked about working with Parkview and offering, offering up some additional uh, food offerings. Uh, there's been several healthcare systems, uh, the latest one over in uh, Toledo, Ohio, that has a uh, joint venture with uh, grocery operation, trying to, again, help move these, these uh, communities out of food deserts uh, into something that's more, uh, uh, more accessible. Uh, than just grocery, or excuse me, than just gasoline uh, station food, but I, I think we're I think we're getting in that direction, Dick. It's just uh, it's taken a while for a lot of us to wake up and and and, uh, and find out how we could really address this from a strategic perspective. And again, I'll go back to the Southeast strategy that uh, and a, a rather large task force has been working on for quite some time. That's going to be a part of that as well. But uh, yeah, it's been a long time coming, uh, but I think we're getting there. Well, I'd like to uh, thank you, Mayor, uh, for uh, once again uh, joining us as our speaker. We enjoy having you uh, annually to give your uh, run up to the uh, state of the city address to our membership. Uh, so uh, thank you and we, uh, we welcome you back every year.
Thank, Thank you. you so very much. Thank you. Thank you all. You, all of you, as I said earlier, you do a great job. So uh, keep, keep doing what you're doing. Uh, our speaker next week, uh, actually we're gonna have two, uh, Brad Little and uh, Allison Gerardo, Community Foundation's Women Fund uh, will be our speaker. So please come back and join us next week to hear that program. Uh, as you know, we, uh, I, one of the things I end every meeting with is uh, uh, the presidential cabinet. Uh, if you bring us our picture here uh, and I ask one of our members to open the door. What you don't know is that I haven't kept very good record of who I've asked and who I haven't. So if I ask you if you've opened the door, be honest, uh, because I want to try to make it to everyone. So I'm going to ask today, Jackie, have I had you open a door before? I, uh, you're muted. No, I have not opened a door yet. Well, you, you did a wonderful job today with our uh, moment of inspiration. So I'd like you to select a door. All right. So uh, let's go with the blue door. And blue it is. And what I have for you today is a gift card for Casa Restaurant. Nice. Thank you. I will mail that out. And thank you for what you do for Rotary. Thank you. Uh, meeting uh, with, uh, with a quote from uh, selected by uh, one of the top 100 movie lines as selected by the American Film Institute. Uh, and find one that uh, related to politics today since the mayor was. So the line that I have is from the 1974 movie, The Godfather. Now you say, I have to do with politics, uh, but you, you may believe that this line does. And the line from the movie is, keep your friends close, but keep your enemies closer. <laughs> so uh, at this time, we say that all Rotarians look to the four-way test to guide our thoughts, words, and actions for the week ahead. Please join me in reciting the test as we prepare for the week of the things we think, say, or do. Is it truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and good relationships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? And Rotary is adjourned. <laughs>